Let's make a wet felted white rose. Why not? First thing to notice about a wet felted white rose is it's not white. That's really important. We're going to add some colour. See how the real roses do have some other colour. So I'm using this lovely soft pink merino top wool along with this other merino top. And there's the end product. This is a simple little rose. And it's beautiful. Yours will be beautiful too. So I'm putting a bit of wool onto a carter. And then do I add a large lump of pink? No, I don't. What we're going to do is pull out the tiniest little bits of pink. Because our leaves, our petals, sorry, our petals are going to be very finely felted. They're very fine. So I carded a little bit with my trusty little carders. And this will be enough wool for probably three roses at least. So you see I've done some yellow mixed in with the white, some white and some pink. I have two metal containers there. You can use either one for a small rose or a large rose. It's a resist. And the rest of the resist is this old shopping bag. They're getting a bit hard to get, this really thin sort. And this was a good use for them. I only put a tiny bit of detergent on half of the shopping bag, fold it over and then start to work it down, pull it down a bit. Be careful with your fingers here because the wool will stick to the, the detergent etc etc. The only thing to do is to be careful. So I've put a little bit of colour underneath. And on top I am putting some of the white merino. You can definitely see the difference between the, the white wool and the wool. It's got the little tiny bit of colour in it. I've also pre-prepared my leaves. And when you look at the leaves you will see that they are separated. Now you can separate your petals as well. But with this template, this resist, we're limited by the length of the shopping bag. So in order to get some sort of grading on our petals from small to large, small in the centre to larger on the outside, I have used the scissors to trim it off a little bit. Then I wrapped it up and I've put it into an old stocking foot. I'm using this IKEA shelving plastic. I'm mentioning the name because it's quite thick and yes, it's bubble side up. And the bubbles are more like little dot ridges that give a lot of resistance as we're rolling. And I hadn't used it like this before with this more or less a traditional way of making felt and just rolling it. I also do a lot of work from hand to hand, rolling it between my hands, hitting it from one hand to the other. Lots of percussion involved here, lots of massaging. And I have to admit, I also spent at least an hour while I was watching TV um, working on this rose, just massaging it. And every now and then I would go and wet it again. You can use warm water, don't use really hot water because we're not wanting it to felt fast, we're wanting it to felt slowly. And you can see there that I stopped to turn the tube so that I wasn't just hitting it in the one spot all the time, just like you would if you were making a little piece of felt. Look how much has come through the end of that stocking foot well and truly felted in the center of our rose. Unfortunately, our leaves appear to have shrunk. They are also very well felted, but I can fix that. 
When you see the final product of this rose, you will note that I have been able to just get my fingers in and make those leaves a bit wider in the right places again. Now normally I say that you need something sharp to do this so that your big fat fingers don't get in the way. But if you watch me here, you'll see that's probably the only time I've used that little tool. I have just used my fingers and everything was fine. I also used some wooden sticks. They can be handy as well. It just helps you to be able to go slowly now you can start to cut in and put some petals in. You can also choose not to have petals and to have your rose much more of a closed rose. You can also do this so that as you unroll each part of the rose, you actually fold it in on itself. You can also do it so you fold the leaves out, the petals, sorry, out on themselves. Just experiment try and see what happens so let's see what's going to happen here with this lovely little bit of yellow center I've made for this rose because it is like the real ones that I've got in my garden mostly in the end I think I folded it over and then twirled it around and that's where the little stick thing can be really handy because you want to twirl it now as I've cut each leaf, I've then worked on it again because I don't want any of my edges to look like a scissor cut, even though they are a scissor cut. So by doing this movement where I just gently stretch it, I've cut off a little bit of those see-through bits. You can choose to do that or not to do that. Your choice. Every single rose you make is going to be unique. and it will be beautiful. You also don't have to attach the leaves, I just have. Now I don't put a stem on these at the moment because I'm making these ones to be worn on clothes. Doesn't mean you can't have a stem on it. Having a stem on it would be fine. Absolutely fine. It would also be fun to have some small resists and make some buds as well using the same, same sort of instructions, same technique have it connected at the center. There's no end to what you can make and do with this process. What I really love about these is their lightness. If you're wearing one on a dress, it's, it's weightless. It really is weightless. It weighs so very, very little. See, I'm already, I'm already reasonably happy with this rose. I know it's going to be okay. And it is well felted, so that extra time that I put in watching TV, it's very hard to work that, um, has been worth it. Because the petals have felted well. But they're still really fine. This is no thick, chunky lump of wool. It's very, very fine. Now, one of the things I think I forgot to mention was that I did put some silk from a silk hanky as they call them onto this wall so if we get the light in the right place you'll be able to see that silk I think anything we can do to just get a little bit of variety on the surface just makes it look more interesting you don't even know why it looks more interesting but it does hope you're enjoying this video please subscribe to my channel that would be terrific thank you so much for watching 
I really appreciate it. And if you did enjoy watching it, could you please hit the like button? That would also be fantastic. Make my day. There's going to be another video soon where I make a really large rose. You just had a sneak preview of it.